Hello again, everybody. This is Jay once again. And in this video, I want to continue our look at looping and look at the for loop. In the previous video, I showed you how to write a while loop. And in this video, I'm going to demonstrate the concept of a for loop. So what is a for loop? Let's go ahead and dive right in and I'll show you. All right, so here on my laptop, I'm going to create a new script and I'm just going to call it loop.py. All right, and I'm going to start writing it the same way we always do. Set our environment here. All right, so before I show you the actual for loop, we need to have something to iterate through. Iterate is what you call it when you do something for every item in a list. So what I'm going to do is actually create a list right now. I'm going to call it foods and I'm going to include some of my favorite foods here. All right, so we have a list. So just to show you that the list works, I'm going to go ahead and write a print statement right here. I will save the file, send it to the background and let's mark it executable. And let's run it. And nothing surprising here. You could basically see that it's printing the actual list. It's just displaying the entire list on our terminal. So now let's add a for loop to this and see what that can do for us. Go ahead and bring back our terminal here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to remove this print statement and I'm going to write our first for loop. So I'm going to go ahead and write it out and run it and then I will explain it. All right, so I added the for loop right here. So you could pause the video if you need to in order to copy that down into your script. I'm going to go ahead and save the file. We're going to run it. And before I run it, do you know what's going to happen? Sometimes the code can be self-explanatory, sometimes not. But I'm going to go ahead and run it and you can see whether or not you're right. And you can see what it actually did is it printed each individual item from the list on its own line. So let's go ahead and bring that back and I'll show you how that works. So to write a for loop, you start with a keyword for and then you come up with a variable. Now this particular variable, it doesn't matter what you call it. It's just completely arbitrary and you just have to name it something. So f is simple. So for f in foods, which basically means for every item in foods, f being the item, it's going to execute the print statement against that particular item. So this for loop is actually going to loop four times. First time it runs, it's going to set f equal to pizza and then it's going to print, print f right there. And then it's going to run again and set f equal to tacos and print that and then so on with hamburger and salad. And every additional item in the list that we add, if we run this for loop again, it'll print those items. Since each individual item is a print statement, it's going to execute four print statements. And that's the reason why when we ran it, we saw each individual item from the list on its own line because it's basically the same as writing a print statement four times. And in previous videos, I've mentioned that you should never repeat yourself. Now we could certainly go through and execute a print statement for, you know, the first item, the second item, the third item, straight down and we'd get the exact same output. But we don't want to repeat ourselves. We don't want to write code over and over again. So we don't want to write four print statements for this. We would prefer to do it in one if we can. And the for loop right here allows us to do exactly that. I write one single print statement and it's executed for each item in the list. So as I mentioned, the variable that we create as our iterator for the for loop is completely arbitrary. I could call that whatever I want. There's no rule here. Now we certainly want to keep it simple, but if I changed it to something like cars, which is kind of silly, it'll still work just fine. There's no difference. So that just to show you that you can, in fact, call this whatever you want. It doesn't matter. Python is smart enough to know that this variable that you're setting here is an iterator and it's actually going to apply that to the list that we have right here and simply print it for every item in there. So basically you can come up with your own naming scheme, but in this case for F and foods actually does work just fine. Now loops are useful for several different data types in Python, not just lists. A list is a very easy example to give you, 
but it's actually useful for dictionaries, any kind of list. In fact, you may or may not know this, but a string is also a list, technically. So we've actually been working with lists for quite some time, but we can actually do the same thing with a list. So what I'm gonna do is rewrite this program, and then I will be right back. All right, everyone, I just rewrote the program completely. I added a new variable, and I set it to the string, Python is awesome. And then I created a for loop, and I wrote for C in sentence, print C. So go ahead and take a look at this and see if you can predict what's going to happen when I run this program. All right, now that you've had a moment, I'm gonna go ahead and save the file. Let's go ahead and run it. Well, that's interesting. It actually printed each individual character. Now, I probably gave that away because I wrote for C in sentence, and you may have assumed C stood for a character, and you'd be right. It basically looped over every single item in this string, or you know, which is essentially a list, and it executed the for loop for every single character here. Now, I don't want to confuse you and lead you to believe that Python has a data type for a single character. In other languages, you have a data type called car or care, spelled like that, which is a data type that includes a single character. That actually does not exist in Python. Python does not have that particular type of data type. It doesn't have a character data type. And I just used C for character just because I thought it made sense. If you're curious, each individual character in a string is actually a string itself. If that confuses you, don't worry about it. The only thing to know is that there actually is not a data type for a single character. But in this case, to get back on topic, what I essentially did is I created a variable called sentence, and I set it equal to this, and it executed this for loop for every character in that string. But that's not all we can do. I'm gonna show you another version of a for loop, and I'll be right back once I have that written out. All right, so here is a brand new version of our script. I went ahead and rewrote it, and there's actually a few new concepts here that I added that I think will make the program more fun, but will require a bit of explanation. First of all, here I'm importing random. I'm not gonna go into importing in this video in particular, but I'll just mention that import simply allows us to import a feature that doesn't normally come with Python. I'll talk more about that later in the series, so don't worry about that right now. Now here I'm creating a counter, and I'm actually setting it equal to random.randint. So that requires a bit of explanation. So now that I've imported random, I can use it here, and I'm using the randint method, and I'm setting it to a lower value of five and a higher value of 10, which essentially means that counter will be set to a random integer between five and 10. So this variable right here will be different every time we run it. Now I'm setting number equal to one. So no surprise there, this is just an integer and I'm setting it equal to one. So here I created a for loop, and I used variable i, which is short for iterator, but again, that's arbitrary. You can create whatever you want for that. And then in range, so now what I'm doing is I'm using the range function, and I'm setting that to whatever is the current value of counter, which again will be different every time this is run because it's a random number. What I'm gonna do in the for loop is print whatever number is equal to and then I'm going to add one to it. So let's go ahead and run it. And you can see what it did is it actually printed one through eight. And what that means is when this ran, this counter was set to eight, and it just ran the for loop eight times, adding one to the number right there each time it ran. So let's go ahead and run it again and see if we get a different number. We got eight again. That time it went up to six, six again, seven, and so on. So there you go. I gave you a few examples of a for loop. I even included a pseudo random number to make the most recent example of the for loop 
a little bit more interesting than most. At this point in our series, the concepts are gonna to start to get a little bit more advanced, nothing too major. I'm gonna start combining some of the concepts that I've taught you in previous videos to make our scripts a little bit more interesting. At the same time, I'm gonna to continue to teach you new concepts. So there you go. I'll have new videos in this series uploaded very soon, so stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching my video, guys. I really appreciate it. And if you wanna help me out, go ahead and check out the links in the show notes below this video, where I have a link to my Patreon page, as well as an Amazon store, where I have a listing of hardware that I've personally tested myself to be compatible with Linux. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe. And I look forward to making more videos for you guys very soon. Thanks again.